of the extremely exclusive really cool guitars because uh, we have one of those um full disclaimer leslie is doing yard work because she likes that more than this uh which means uh, michiel Poussinier is up there switching uncontrollably and i'm at his mercy i have no way to stop him so if there's anything in this video that seems odd that's the belgian's fault Blame it all the Belgians. Blame it all the... What the crap? So, the Carry Elite is what I'm holding. And you don't know what that is. It's from PJD. And it's very likely that you don't know what that is. Because as of yet, I think they've got one shop in England. Uh, it's a very small builder. And I saw these guitars at NAMM early in the morning when they weren't even at the booth. So I never met Lee the really nice man who made this guitar for me. That rhymes. Lee, who made this for me. Get it? Rhyming. Songsmith. And uh, Cheddar and Harry and I, we checked these out. And first, I didn't get what it is. Wait, I gotta unplug this. Ash? Harry has no clue. Um, pine. Ash pine. Pine ash. Uh, pear. Mango tree wood, um, but it's orange. I know this. I know one thing. It's orange, and that is definite. <laughs> Harry, Harry doesn't like the too, nice tops. Too quilty. Too quilty. After a closer look, it became apparent that what this is is a thin line telly. Uh, all the makings of a traditional Fender thin line telly. The headstock is kind of a dead giveaway. But then you look at the body and you're like, that's got to be a set neck guitar. Well, it's not. Look at it. It's a bolt-on. Michael Bolt-on. Um, roasted maple neck. Hello! Um, and then it's got this hole, which means it's very light. It's a hollow body or semi-hollow. Humbucker equipped. Michael Bolt-on. It's a, it's a thin line, just with a really beautiful um, single cut body, reminiscent of the Krautster, someone said. And I, I, I can see that. It's got a fixed bridge with individual saddles. You know, if you want to ride six different horses. Get in, hmm. It's just a great original design, if you ask me. Killer top. I can't imagine that being any better. Um, and well, I can read you some stats from the website, but on the website, as far as I can tell, they only have the carry, not the carry elite. So the carry usually has a mahogany neck. This has roasted maple. Um, this has a swamp ash body, but you can also get that with mahogany. Look at the matching cavity cover. So here's the, um, fixed bridge, right? Rather simple, a beautiful top in just this amazing bluish greenish turquoise. It, I, it's literally my favorite color. Big ass cream binding and this natural, beautiful light swamp ash with matching cavity covers in wood, of course, recessed. That is something you, you only find in very high end guitars. And here, uh, bolt on without a metal plate and slightly curvy right there. It's very sexy. Um, 
So it says uh, the fretboard is rosewood, so we're going to go in this case that looks like it. I love the inlays right there. Very subtle and unique. Not too much, not too little, just perfect. Uh, the frets are Jeska FW37080. And now you know it. It's got a compound radius of 10 to 12 double, double thingies. Um, 42 millimeters here. Uh, standard C-shape, hardware is Goto, no locking. I, and on a classic -y instrument like this, I'm not going to bitch about it. Any modern instrument, like a modern metal guitar or a sewer modern or an AZ or something like this, I want locking tuners. This is classic -y, so I'm okay with it. Um, there's a handwritten number 35 on it and a something. I don't know what that means. Some, some kind of number. I don't know. Um, so, bare knuckle boot camp. You would think bare knuckle, that's all. Ah, well, no, they're not. These are the, the subtle knuckles. Um, you get it in faded black, cherry, blue, orange, green, purple. But it's custom, so order whatever you want. Volume tone. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, a couple of things about this line, the Carry Elite. This is the cheapest one. And you ask, rightfully so, how can it possibly be more awesome? It can be awesomer with a more flamed maple neck. That's the next upgrade. This is rather simple, but if you want killer flame on it, you can get that. And then the next upgrade is killer flame and an even more amazing top, he said. I don't know how. I love this. Um, it comes in, get this, a PJD labeled Hiscox case, which is a really good case. It just, this is high end shit. And I'm very impressed that the guitar comes in that, given the price. Because when I asked, and then I converted it into euro, this is 2,500 euro, 2,500 euro roughly, um, including the case and everything. That's ridiculous. And you didn't even have a build time of like, you know, a year. So what's this for? Some of the most stunning cleans you will ever hear, and that's in a sec. And um, all the hollow body stuff. Is it a metal guitar? If you wanted to, but I mean, nah. Uh, but anything blues, rock, rockabilly, surfy, it's just a gorgeous instrument for not more than you would get from any standard builder. You're seeing a POS behind me, aware, uh, right there. And I'm going to get into the difference between these two guitars, which is which are actually very, very similar. Let's go at it. Couple sounds, and then we're going to talk about the difference between an off-the-line CE24. This has 22 frets, I think. What do I know? I don't play up there. Um, into the Tone King Sky King for now, with a cream back loaded cap. You have to be able to play. very clear and in the middle even clearer Tap or anything, it's not necessary because the clarity 
Uh, and the brittle nature is there, but brittle in a beautiful way. It's just spanky. In the bag. So if you put some delay and reverb on them using that from the aux, get this. Now you put uh, Tate Effects and Terry's on there, and this is what happens. Call that good. Let's pump it into a couple of amps. Let's go for the JCM 800. Let's go into the AC20, which is Voxish, which is probably a good idea to pair with this. That works, let's do uh, some stuff on it and the Tate, and here we go. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Plexi. Because why not? That's, you know, classic -y. Um, orange rocker verb 50 no no uh, yes <laughs> Can it be heavy? Yes, it can be heavy. Uh, let's do the Friedman Dirty Shirley, because it's on. going for more complex voicings because I know the guitar can handle it and that the, all the notes will be there. It's I'm doing it instinctively. It's a word. Nice job on the switching there, Michelle, by the way. Unless I've missed some diamond wipe that I haven't seen. In Yeah, whatever I said, fuck that. That's a killer sound with a dirty shorty, I love that. I don't know what I'm doing, it's just this. Killer, do we have more amps? Oh yeah, uh, the Synergy uh, Ecstasy module uh, on the Blue Channel. Let's not do that. Um, so generally speaking, this is as good as a guitar comes. Now this is obviously direct from the builder, so 2500 is a very good price. Now if you put a couple of people in between, like a distributor and a shop and stuff like this, let's see what you get from an off-the-shelf, off-the-line factory guitar made in the US with a similar idea. Now PIS has a similar line. It's called the CE line. Um, what they're doing there is 
deliberately making a cheapo PRS, let's call it that, where they are, according to me, deliberately taking features away so that you have the feeling, oh, wait, for under three grand, I don't get a full PRS. Now, this is a great tool. As a guitar that does all the jobs this guitar needs to do, hollow body, double humbucker, trim, um, coil, oh, coil tap, all that is ac absolutely great. The message that Pia is sending with it, I'm not okay with. The message that Pia is sending is, we are cutting corners so that you have the feeling you have to spend more money on a real PRS. They're telling me, oh, um, you know, we can't do this. This is the best we can do for the money. And that obviously is bullshit because I'm looking at uh, a PRSSE with loads of features. A friend of mine just bought one for 830 bucks, uh, sunk in recessed cavity covers, amazing abalone birds. I mean, really beautiful features. And PRS is telling me this is the best they can do for 2,700 euro. And I get pissed off about this. Now, again, this is just a me not liking the policy of the brand. As an instrument, this is great. Okay. So right now, actually, the one thing I want to bitch about you can't see because in all the pictures right there, it looks as if the top is beautifully matching. When you're looking at it, on the wall, right, yeah, that's what it looks like. To me, 90% of the time, that's what the top looks like. They are absolutely not matching. The, the grain is visible from a different angle. Uh, they clear, yeah, right there. Thank you, Michiel. Now, you spent 2,700 bucks. Is that what you want? I, I, is that what you expect for the money? Now, can they do it? Absolutely. They make some of the most beautiful guitars I've ever seen. I actually own some of them. But for 27, this is not cool. It just isn't cool to hold the really nice stuff away from you because they don't want to cheapen it by making this more affordable. It, I, I don't get it, okay? Um, cavity covers. Look at this. This, okay, for the thickness of the guitar. Let's, many guitars have that on top. But why is this piece of plastic which, uh, first of all, just a simple piece of plastic, well, that's fine. But why is this on top? When on the CE, uh, on, on the SEs, they can do this. On the more expensive guitars, they can sink it in. Why is this on top? When PJD can do it in wood, sunk in for less. This is deliberately done to make it a cheaper feeling instrument. The birds, I love the birds. The birds are great. Why in the world would the birds be plastic? Well, because the nice birds you get when you spend more money. Now, interestingly, the SE from my, from my student has the most stunning abalone, not mother of pearl, like really colorful rainbow birds, beautifully done. Why in the world does a 2,700 euro guitar have the plastic birds? Now, it might not matter to you because, as I said, as a tool, this is great. As a tool, this is a really good guitar. It plays like a USPRS because it is. It sounds like a USPRS because it is. Um, all that is great, but it bothers me that they're doing these deliberate cheapenings. Plastic, why? Um, the neck, just like on the Silver Sky, this is glued on, and we have a scarf joint right here, as you can clearly see. So it's a one, two, three-piece neck, because they don't want to spend the extra, I talked to Luthia, three dollars to actually cut it out of one piece of maple. Now, we, we could argue that's for stability. We could argue blah, 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 but Realistically, we know it's them cutting corners. On a 2,700 euro instrument, I don't want the company to tell me we're cutting corners. It pisses me off. Uh, biggest corner cut is it comes in a rather flimsy gig bag. I even have the feeling it's less good than the SE gig bag. I love the SE gig bags. 2,700 bucks comes in a gig bag. 2,500 custom made in England, PHJD, comes in a Hiscox case. Which is actually, if you ask me, better than the normal a uh, PRS case. But let's get into the sounds, just for a sec. Oopsie. Now, when we get to it as an instrument, good tuners that work to the T. Locking tuners, the PRS top locking thing, which is li literally just open it up on the top, put a screw in that you can move with your finger. I mean, it's the easiest form of top locking tuner ever, but it works. I have to say, the back of the guitar, which looks like it's a one-piece, 
is gorgeous. It's a, it's a nice piece of wood, as they say. Okay, no complaint there. It's, I mean, they have to have a reputation they need to uphold. Um, the trim, for me, when it comes to a blade trim, in this case on six different screws, um, is one of the smoothest on the market. Uh, it's, it's flawless. It goes up and down. It's it beautifully wiggleable, which obviously the PJD doesn't have a trim. Um, it is, and that's the thing with this, compared, if we were comparing it to the PJD, and this is a PJD video, it's very thick. It's extremely thick. And what I love on the PJD for the cleans, it's that brittle kind of openness. It always sounds open. This sounds thick and wooly. Sound-wise, it's a different guitar. Check this out. sounds but these are already pushing you can hear they're pushing more than the uh, PJD did so if I'm going to the uh, AC20 for example this should be good rock sound <laughs> It is very clearly a different sound character. Um, and for me, the humbuckers are a little bit too much pushing and a little bit too fat for what I expect of this guitar. But it, that's a taste thing. Now, if you go to the single core, it gets beautifully thin, but thinner than the PhD. P PhD. Oh, PJD. Oh, you have to do this. So I think the PJD sits right between the single core and the humbucker setting of this. very thin there, but nice. And I'll play guitar. Um, so this is clearly a great instrument. 2700 comes in a gig bag and has a couple of things that just, you know, three piece neck, plastic birds. What the crap is this all about? Um, I don't like a company, I'm gonna repeat it for the third time now, that tells me, yeah, we're not doing the nice stuff for you at 2700. You're gonna have to pay more, even though they easily could do the nice stuff. Um, it is a good tool. It also, and that's a big difference between the two has probably higher resale value because it is a PRS. Now, if you get something built from a relatively unknown small builder, you might actually get a better instrument in this case, I, according to what I think. Uh, but trying to resale the PhD, PhD, what the crap am I saying? PJD, you might have a harder time. So if resale value, to, to me, it doesn't matter. If it matters to you, that, that might be something to consider. However, this... To me, it says custom shop. This says, I put everything in there. I put my heart and soul in there. This is, you know, every little feature that makes a guitar player drool. Whereas on the PRS, I'm like, could we please have the matching top a little bit more? I'm missing a little bit 
little bit of the stuff on the PS. They're both great instruments. You know, I'm a, I'm a big PS fan, don't get me wrong, but I gotta keep it real on the channel. There's a cat coming in. Now, um, I'm gonna see uh, if we can get a weight and then we're out of here. What? What? Can I help you? I think this might be interesting. Both guitars are light. Now the PS clock's in at 3.1 and 3. So very close. Um, if you want a PS and you don't care about matching tops and that it looks completely off from certain angles um, and you care about resale value and all that and you want more fatness, yeah, the PS is for you. Uh, if the gig bag's fine or you have a good gig bag or you have a good case, all good. With this, the package for me is correct. It's all good. Maybe once uh, Lee gets a distributor and he gets a shop and maybe these are more wildly, 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 widely available, um, maybe I assume this is 3,500. And at 3,500, I would have made a video giving you the thumbs up on it because I'm fine with 3,500 for this. At 2,500, I'm going to be honest, you'd be a complete and utter idiot not to buy this. If you like hollow bodies, if you like cleans, if you like overdrives, if you want rock and rolly sounds, this is a great instrument. I can highly recommend you're going to see it on the channel here a lot. I love the color. Um, Lee's a super nice guy. There's literally nothing to complain about with him, the brand, and the guitar. PJD, absolutely kick-ass. Uh, thank you for building this for me, Lee. You are a doll, as they say in the business. Thank you, Michelle, for only using, I hope, one diamond wipe. I don't know. I didn't look. Um, and we're going to put some animales al final. Memories 